Obama convened 120 experts to the White House Thursday for a summit on health care. Participants included doctors, health insurance companies, lawmakers, and patients. Obama vowed to make passing health care reform a priority this year. In this effort, every voice has to be heard. Every idea must be considered. Every option must be on the table. There should be no sacred cows. Each of us must accept that none of us will get everything that we want and that no proposal for reform will be perfect. If that's the measure, we will never get anything done. But when it comes to addressing our health care challenge, we can no longer let the perfect be the enemy of the essential. While the president said every idea must be considered, the idea of creating a single-payer national health insurance program has already been rejected. White House spokesperson Robert Gibbs said Thursday the president doesn't believe that's the best way to achieve the goal of cutting costs and increasing access. Initially, no supporters of single-payer were invited to the summit. After protests were called, the White House invited Democratic Congressman John Conyers and the president of the Physicians for a National Health Program. Single-payer advocates have also been largely silenced in the media. A new study being released today by FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy Reporting, found the views of advocates of single-payer have only been aired five times in the hundreds of major newspaper, broadcast and cable stories about health care reform over the past week. No single-payer advocate has appeared on a major TV broadcast or cable network to talk about the policy during that period. Well, to talk more about this, we're joined by Luke Mitchell. He's senior editor at Harper's Magazine. His article in the February issue is called Sick in the Head, Why America Won't Get the Health Care System It Needs. Welcome to Democracy Now, Luke. Thank you for having me, Amy. Um, so why isn't single payer being considered? Why has it been rejected out of hand? Why do you think it's the only answer? Well, it's it's amazing how how far how out of hand it's been rejected. Max Bacchus uh, said a couple of months ago that everything is on the table. Uh, Max Baucus, the U.S. senator who's uh, going to have a big hand in uh, coming up with whatever reform we do see this year, uh, said everything is on the table except single payer. He went out of his way to say that we can't have single payer, and I think. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why they're so explicitly rejecting it. One of them is that uh, it's a threat to a great deal of people who are making a lot of money right now, uh, which is, say, the insurance companies. A single-payer system uh, would take a lot of money out of the insurance system, uh, the private insurance system. And it's also something that a lot of people in Washington understand as uh, ideologically threatening. That is to say, they equate a single-payer system with what they call, quote, socialized medicine, unquote. Um, so I think what Obama is trying to do is neutralize that threat uh, and get, uh, as he said, the uh, imperfect uh, rather than nothing. And I, maybe he's right. It, there's clearly a massive resistance to single-payer on, on the Hill. And this is especially surprising given the fact, as you said in your article, that as recently as 2003, Obama himself said he favored single-payer health right. insurance. That's right. That's right. When I started my Harper's article, uh, what, I, what I wanted to understand is why uh, uh, this approach to health care, single-payer, uh, which is used in most of the wealthy Western nations, which is uh, much more efficient, which is much more equitable, which is uh, uh, much more uh, amenable to making people healthy uh, is so far out of the mainstream in the United States. And I think uh, what, what what I found in the article was that that um, that it's purely a, a mental blockage. That is to say that even if you can make the argument, the practical argument for it, and we can talk about that in a minute, uh, people still don't want it. But we're in a different time. Yeah. Um, it had, you know, the politicians have said that it's not doable before, but now we are facing a mass crisis, mass unemployment, tens of millions of people without insurance, even those who have it are having trouble. I wanted to go to Obama yesterday, speaking about at this health care yeah. summit, the costs of health care. Um, in a minute, we'll go to that. But the times have changed. We're talking about bailing out banks. Yeah. 
Well, and, and, and indeed, this, this strikes me as a tremendous opportunity. Uh, on the other hand, the idea of universal health care was completely out of favor, uh, you know, 10 years ago as well. So we are moving in a positive direction. Uh, you know, just a few years ago, the president was able to uh, found it politically feasible, uh, President George W. Bush found it politi politically feasible to veto a bill that would ensure children. Uh, that's changed. Uh, I wanted to ask you about a company that you mentioned in, in your article in Harper's that most Americans have never heard of, but which may v benefit a lot from all of this health care reform, mm -hmm. especially since Obama is talking about computerization of medical records, using stimulus money for that. McKeeson. Yeah. Who, who is McKeeson or what are they? And uh, McKesson is the 18th largest corporation in the United States. I, I actually, when I lived in San Francisco, lived a few blocks from their headquarters, had never heard of them. Uh, and as I was researching my Harper's article, I, I came across a book by their CEO, John Hamburger, called uh, Skin in the Game, where he was making an argument, uh, basically, that was the opposite of the argument for single pair. He was arguing that uh, when you use market solutions, uh, you have a much more efficient system, uh, which I did not find to be a compelling argument. But he, in making that argument, uh, brought something else uh, to light that was fascinating, which is that he wanted to have more information in the system. And that's what his company does. They make, uh, uh, among many other things, they process 80% of the prescriptions in the United States. It's more than eBay and Amazon combined uh, in terms of processing individual orders. And they make all these various uh, computer systems for communicating your health to your doctor and your doctor community, uh, communicating your health finance to your insurer. Um, that's obviously going to be a growing business. And one of the things Obama talked about today, uh, yesterday, was making that business uh, uh, something that is more useful to people at the ends, rather more useful to the people trying to make a profit from it. Um, since single payer is almost never mentioned yes. in the media, just explain what it is. Well, it's one of the phrases you hear uh, about single payer is uh, everybody in, nobody out. That is to say, in a single payer system, you don't have a system for deciding who gets treatment. Uh, so uh, you have one payer, obviously, the single payer. Usually the government, though it could be a government uh, a corporation or some other entity, uh, like a utility. Uh, and like Medicare, Medicaid. Precisely. In fact, there's a bill, and it, this is the amazing thing. Uh, John Conyers actually wrote a bill several years ago, H.R. 676. It has 100 sponsors, more or less, on the Hill, and uh, it's also known as the Medicare for All Act, uh, and it would essentially expand Medicare to every American. Um, the advantages of single payer are, are much more than just uh, coverage, though. Um, but it does solve the first moral problem, which is that there are 50 million Americans, now 46 because the uh, Children's Health Insurance uh, program has passed, uh, 46 million Americans without insurance, and it immediately solves that problem. But it also introduces huge savings into the systems, uh, into the system because you don't have this massive overhead. And finally, it introduces smart incentives into the system. Right now, the incentive of a private insurer is to keep you healthy as long as you have insurance. Uh, and as soon as you don't have insurance, they don't care. So uh, all Americans are going to enter Medicare at 65, uh, even with supplements. And that means the private insurers don't have such an interest in keeping you healthy after you're 65, so they don't encourage things like smoking cessation or weight loss or uh, any of the other uh, things that they would do to keep you uh, going. Um, but it also, uh, in private insurance, has a very strange incentive. Basically, the role of a private insurance company is to separate people who are going to get sick from people who are not going to get sick. They're very good at it. They use technology from companies like McKesson to do it. They're going to get better at it uh, as we get better at understanding why people become sick with genetic and proteomic data. And what the insurance, insurance company's goal ultimately is to do is to create two perfect circles. One circle with people who never get sick and who have private insurance, and one circle with people who will get sick and don't have private insurance. Uh, creating those two circles uh, is very profitable. It takes a lot of money to do it, uh, and it doesn't help a lot of Americans. And yet, right now, they say it is unfeasible. The idea of having a middleman in the middle making a profit um, is what is being considered, even with universal health care. Yeah. Unless it were to change. Well, you, you had mentioned Obama himself uh, has said repeatedly that single payer is the best approach, but there are uh, a lot of uh, built-in uh, players uh,
that need to be dealt with. And I think that's a true observation of reality in America today. Uh, and certainly the universal health programs we are seeing on offer uh, right now basically act to bribe those middlemen into not complaining too much. Uh, we, what we have is a mandate system. Pretty much every Democrat who has uh, uh, proposed a system has said, we'll have a mandate, maybe a universal mandate, but it basically requires you to buy private insurance. If you can't afford the private insurance, uh, the government will fund you. So it's not a market system exactly. It's basically government funded private insurance. Uh, and the reason I think that people, uh, normal people might find that preferable is that normal people have a sort of a preference for what they think of as market solutions. They think this will somehow be more efficient. Or perhaps it, no, this other system has never been explained to them before. That's right. And, and well, Luke, I just want to say thank you for explaining to us. We will continue to follow this issue, of course, one of the most important issues uh, in this country today. And we will link to your article at Harper's Magazine. Luke Mitchell, senior editor at Harper's Magazine. His piece is called Sick in the Head.